Welcome back to Palette Expanders. We're here to taste Mystery Meads, and uh, this is the sixth time we've done it, and I still feel like I'm learning a lot. <laughs> here we go. We're back. We're back. And it's episode six. Episode six. Um, episode six. Spoilers, if you just watched episode five, um, right before this, I'm wearing the same hat. It's so crazy. <laughs> this was recorded a week later, too. I don't know how that yeah, happened. Yeah, it's amazing. This so, schedule. we got two mystery meads. Purpose of the show is to bring mystery meads to one another, mm -hmm. taste test them, attempt to discover what they are, or suss out what they are, basically, um, only by tasting, and then we reveal what we have. So, BC has brought a mead. I have brought a mead. Now, this is BC's. I'll throw it up right now, so you know exactly what he has brought. And this is what I've brought. Um, we are going to go ahead and get this going. We're going to pour some mead. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. I mean, yours is relatively clear. It's got just like a slight yeah. haze to it. So looking at these, first of all, we just noted these are very different colors. Yeah. Which, um, I, this is like a, we need a green one. We need to get my Yoda. <laughs> I know, right? We, we have, have a stoplight. <laughs> stoplight. <laughs> so, uh, yours is also very clear. Yeah. As we were talking about, you, you've obviously done great things to clear this up. <laughs> Mine has not been attempted to clear very well. And that yeah. was because I didn't. One to didn't, try. didn't care. <laughs> so, so uh, let's start with yours. Yeah, okay. Because we, we started with mine last okay. time. Okay, I was gonna ask. I, it looks it I looks like the, they may be similar bodied. Yeah. Uh, things. Obviously, here, so. probably different flavors. Unless if you achieve the flavor I got from mine with this color, I'll be impressed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, very um. Yeah, you have the word dandelion root stuck in my head, but it's yeah. very. From last week's episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I definitely, um, that sunflower, floral, um, grassy, earthy, not, not like hibiscus. It's interesting. I, I don't get mm. a lot of honey character. Whatever this, this floral variety is, um, is really in my face. Yeah. It doesn't hide. No. It doesn't hide at all. Which, maybe it's not a bad thing. I gotta get away from it for a second. Yeah, clear that out. I don't know. I think um, I'm feeling like it's gotta be, like, <laughs> I feel like uh, I, I inhaled this so much yeah. that like my my whole head is just rattling around. I just I love do... that like every third episode of this, I bring something that just causes you to have like terrible nose confusion. There's, yeah, there's like a um, bold. There is a uh, like a. <laughs> this is the weirdest way I could say this, but a deep pineapple aroma that I get from it. That's like not bright. That is like like an extremely ripe Pine. pineapple. Mixed in with like a little bit of grassiness that could be uh, dang the lion. I'm trying to think of other things you throw in brewing that are of that regard. Maybe it's a hop. <sighs> Maybe so. <laughs> it's very clear for a hop. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a little stumped. Okay. Okay. This is, of, of all the things that I've made in the last few years, I think this one has the most potent nose on it. Very, yeah, that's, like, I, I inhaled so much that my brain is, like, rattling around, and that's why I'm, like, doing this, to try and, like, uh, fix my nose to where yeah. I can center. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, let's move along. Yeah, this is a total whiplash in, <laughs> in, in aromatics. Yeah. This, you know, you, you said, like, a deep pineapple over here this has got a deep character to it uh-huh i mean i feel like the the aromatics are almost buried down in there and mm -hmm. i've got to really like i mean it's not like you can't smell it but mm -hmm. i've got to like search for nuance in there yeah this is uh i, I see what you're saying because it's not there are some upfront characters but a lot of it is pretty hidden mm -hmm. uh like i feel like i have to yeah to really get it <laughs> it's got a little bit of uh I can a little bit smell the booze in it, but not. It's hard for me to say if I'm smelling like the alcohol or if I'm smelling like s s part of what's fermented in here. Like it's got like a cidery kind of note that I associate with booziness, but it's not like a. It's not like it's burning my nostrils mm -hmm. or I'm feeling like like I'm I'm not feeling it up in my sinuses. I can just right. Like, yeah, a little bit feel like this one overtook like my whole yeah. head for a moment there. This one um, kind of comes in, comes and goes pretty quick. It's deep. I would almost say that the it's like a velvety kind of 
nose to it. It's it smells textured. Mm -hmm. It's it's like it's almost preparing me for like something that's like luscious and coating. Mm -hmm. At least that's what I'm hoping for now that I've I've smelled this. Almost like it's communicating what it what it's gonna be. Whereas we've we've tasted some before where the nose <laughs> yeah. and the flavor were totally different. <laughs> That, um, that's another form of whiplash right there. Right, right. <laughs> I pick up a little bit of honey in there, and I pick up a little bit of, you know, sometimes I'll say like char or caramelization or toastiness. I pick up like a roastiness, mm -hmm. like what you would get with like a roasted carrot, like a like a huh. roasted vegetable kind yeah. of. Um, like, it's very unusual. Okay. It's, I, I could not in any way tell you what's in this glass. <laughs> hey. That's okay. Let's go ahead and try yours now. Okay. I haven't made dandelion wine before. Yeah. But I've definitely, out of interest, recently, mm -hmm. um, I was picking some in the backyard, and I, I was like, what is this? Like, took a little petal. Oh, yeah? You ate some? I'm getting a little bit of that. I think that's that the weedy, like, floral, earthiness. Not very sweet. Aromatics super popping in your face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't quite explain like the the interesting aroma, but it, it doesn't like my brain does this. It's like kind of like what is kind of happening. Like like it just kind of pops back uh -huh. and forth between. Uh -huh. I, I don't want to use the word sour because it's not sour. It's like a weird hibiscus, mm. but not hibiscus. Like the hibiscus has a brighter like, note, and it's not as like tannic. As, yeah, as hibiscus can be, but it does have just that little bit of the body on this is pop. really nice though. Mm -hmm. And um, it definitely is more dry than um, than a lot of things you brought over. Most mm -hmm. of the things you bring are, have a little more sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. This one does feel very smooth, like it's had age on it. So I don't know what ABV this is. I can't really tell, but it does feel smooth. It's not. It does not feel like it was bottled yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm getting that sunflower, that dandelion-y taste. That's what I'm. That's what I'm. So it tastes. Up. It tastes like honey and flowers. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. Okay. I'm not getting any fruit. In that deep, I feel like that deep um, pineapple I talked about is not. Not in there. Not. It's not actually pineapple. It's just like a. It's one of those like someone could create, um, a, a single vocabulary word and then point to all the fruit things that you get. So pineapple has that whatever smell and then mm, you just keep you can mm -hmm. go that and also like connects what's adjacent to, to, yeah, to that yeah also yeah. connects to this also connects to this and you just have this web of yeah yeah words. okay be, uh, quite the project but okay mine i'm, I'm excited about this hey <laughs> we'll say coming off this one take my palate a moment yes i need to sip that a second time that really <laughs> changed Everything that was going it's on driving, here. You're driving along and then... <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's very much like, like, oh, I missed my exit. Huh. People getting on the getting off the freeway that come up. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes wow. a show feels like um, there's this really... It's, it's a terrible gift, but it's a guy driving, and he's obviously blind because he has a cane outside of his car, his door, and he's driving, yeah, yeah. and he's tapping the cane in front of the car to figure out where he's going. That sometimes feels... A little uh, bit, yeah. Like yeah. So this is fruity. This has some some tannin to it. Uh-huh. It is, it is gritty. Uh-huh. Um, like, I feel like it's a little bit... It's a little bit like taking a fine grit sandpaper and just touching it <laughs> to your tongue. It's not. It's yeah. not bad. It's what it reminds me of is you know like uh, like a red delicious apple. You know how it's like a chalkier, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. chunkier apple than like a Granny Smith, and you kind of it's like, it's almost a different fruit than what That's you would, true. like an apple. That's how this feels on on my mm -hmm. tongue. It's got that like apple crunch graininess to it. It is funny to me that the Red apple. Delicious is the staple apple for everything in the world, but it's arguably the worst apple. Yeah. yeah. You can feel free to fight me in the comments <laughs> below. A lot of acid in here. Um, a nice round acid profile. It's a little bit startling at first. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit startling at first because you're like, oh, this is acidic. Like yeah. it's, it's sweet and acidic. But then as that kind of carries around and, and blends with the sweet flavor, it's it's not as jarring. Mm -hmm. Do you get any predominant fruit? I mean, it tastes like fruit. It's a little bit fruit salad-y. Mm -hmm. um, 
Did you ever try the uh, um, no. meat, the <laughs> no, well, freezer I, dump mead? I think I tried it when it was in secondary. I think you pulled it. I taste. have a bottle. I'm. I, it is a throwaway bottle. I'm just going to have you taste it tonight. Just that we have Excellent. the experience. Excellent. <laughs> I'm so excited. Uh, I remember when I tried that, I said it tastes like the sludge that is in the bottom of like a bowl of week old fruit salad. Yep. Um, this doesn't taste like fruit salad sludge, but no, it tastes, there's, there's a lot of indistinct fruit flavor in there, but then there's one thing that almost kind of like carves a hole in the middle of my tongue in there. There is a flavor that like kind of burrows out from the sweetness and the, and the acidity to be like, I'm here. And then it was telling you the shining beam is going right there. <laughs> it's, I mean, yeah, here's Johnny. Uh, I mean, really here's, it's, it's right down the middle of my tongue, especially when I exhale. There is, Definitely a fruit in there. We joked about making a combined glass. I think yeah. combined, these would be really weird, <laughs> but they'd work much better than our previous Yeah, attempt. that's for sure. Because this one has this. Well, do you want to take a guess? I mean, I have to. That's the point of the show. <laughs> that's, that's why I'm here. <laughs> no, um, I'm good. I'm, I'm going to go home. Yeah, I'm out, actually. <laughs> I, I honestly cannot tell you what fruit that is mm -hmm. or what is in there. There's definitely acid. There's definitely... It, there, I sense a roundness to the acid profile that tells me that it's probably like a malic acid. Um, there's a little bit of a tartness in there, though, like a, like a jabbing tartness that feels a little bit like... Um, kind of feels a little bit like tartaric acid. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's and not... here are the three acids found right. in <laughs> <laughs> It's a weird one. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if I had to guess... I'm really trying to, like... <laughs> yeah. Uh, I honestly don't know. I, it tastes a little bit like, like an apple wine. And mm, so that's, okay. that's where my head's at. Like yeah. I, My head just keeps saying, like, put a little bit of cinnamon in here and heat mm. it up in a mug, and this would be good to go. Yeah. It tastes like apple wine. So I would have to guess that this is... it, And I don't think this is right, but I'd have to guess this is, like, a sizer with... Um, like slice up oranges in it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if that'd be any good. I don't know. Uh, Worth a shot. Here we go. If you brew it, let us know. Yeah. In the comments. I was say, somebody's going to do it. All right. And I think I, I felt like I brought you an easy one by comparison. I, I'm i fairly confident this is the dandelion wine. Color to me. Mm, it's, it's pretty it yellow, isn't it? To that. The, the, the super uh, floral, like, Sunflower. I keep saying sunflower. That's not the right word. Um, I'm trying to find other things that are round dandelions mm -hmm. that like also could be. It could be, but I think it's it is that dandelion earthiness mm -hmm. and not sweetness. You know, I think part of me thinks that a dandelion is going to have some sort of sweetness to it, mm -hmm. and that's just not true. <laughs> so, yeah. um, as far as honey character, I don't. I cannot get any particular yeah. varietal. Um, again, I don't. I don't know. I'd, I'd just be taking a jab, honestly, if I Good. if I tried to guess. So I don't have, I don't pick out anything specific. That's my guess. It's great though. I do like this a lot. And the more I sip on it, the first sip was um, I wanted a little more sweetness, but I do mm. like the richness of it. Mm. It is a very rich and um, complex meat. Mm -hmm. Deep. <laughs> <laughs> It's multifaceted. Okay, so... Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to guess that this is, is apples and oranges. I this is know. Darth Vader's mead. Okay. What, which was what a, is Darth Vader, Vader's profile? Um, I went with raspberry. Okay. Because he's a little tart. Uh, dark cherry to uh, help with color, but also okay. I think the cherry and raspberry could kind of contrast. Okay. Um, I also included... What's my original honey? Um... I want to say this had avocado blossom honey, but I don't recall. Okay. And back sweetened with buckwheat honey. No, this is clover honey. Sorry, this is clover honey, and then back sweetened with, back sweetened buckwheat. with buckwheat honey, sitting at around, I think nine to ten percent. Um, really, those are the only things. It's about six months old. Okay. Now that you say the buckwheat, I can pick up that that kind of tart pungency of yeah. the buckwheat honey. I think I that's also have... the grittiness you're getting. Like yeah. that, it has its own 
um, layer of sediment for one, but also it's yeah. stuff it attributes. Yeah. yeah. Did you, so what what if anything did you do for tannin in this? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Other than it definitely has tannin. And I think There's... that I didn't I didn't feel the need to do more because of um, yeah. fruit skins. I used real raspberry. Oh. I used yes I slammed them up a little bit. Slammed them. <laughs> and uh, then I did about a third of a cup of uh, cherry juice, black cherry juice. Okay. Not a lot. Okay. Just really enough to get the color. Um, this thing when it's lit up, it looks more like a like lightsaber. lightsaber. That's the All whole right. point of it. Um, but yeah, it has an interesting body. Man, if you if if you never told me that there was buckwheat honey in it, I would never be able to pick it up. But now that you've told me that, yeah, it's it feels like the the dominant flavor. Uh huh. Interesting. Uh, yeah, no no apples or oranges <laughs> in here. No, that's that's okay. It's tough. It's yeah. I if you if you handed this to me and said that it's a it's a, a cherry raspberry buckwheat mead i i would go mm, all right but if you just handed this to me and said i made this to look like darth vader's lightsaber take a try i'd be like yeah this is great this is yeah i mean that's you what know, i was going for which is i feel like that dark personality because it doesn't taste bad it's no. a, this is a good mead um it just like it's one of those things like do you want the ingredients to be the all-star or yeah. are the ingredients part of the whole mm -hmm. to create that flavor profile mm -hmm. and that obviously color that you were going for yeah and so and, and to me there's there's a world where whenever you start including multiple ingredients um the uh, ability to guess becomes harder of course because you're yeah. competing now if you're making a sizer straight up sizer and you're like this tastes like cherry hmm, there's mm -hmm. probably question marks that should be occurring but i do think that not to say that that's your your meat should not taste like what you intend it to. Right. But it becomes harder with more things logically. It's kinda like my my capsicumel recipe has pineapple and blueberry and peppers. Mm. And none of those things were really designed to jump out at you in there. Yeah. They were all designed to support the pepper flavor. Right. And so it's it's the type of thing that I wouldn't go to my friends and be like, try this blueberry pineapple meat I made. <laughs> yeah. Say, try this pepper meat I made. And they, they, the complexity is interesting yeah. without them ever having to know what the other things were that contributed toward mm -hmm. that. So it's like, it's an interesting duality of recipe creation. Yeah. Where it's, are you trying to make it taste like the things on the label or are you trying to achieve a very specific flavor profile by using the things that were on the label? Mm-hmm. And I think with, um, commercially, of course, people, when they say it tastes like raspberry if it doesn't taste like raspberry then right it's a little bit suspect but home brewing it's about making good stuff do we do you, what you want i yeah. think this is the dandelion meat i am i'm it is throwing that out it is it you're, you're it just correct. has like from the moment i smelled it i was yeah. like it doesn't help that this is dandelion season <laughs> right but, they're everywhere right now but you know that's uh, what they say they say you're supposed to open this up when the dandelions start blooming interesting so what well, do you think that's to make you age a year i it? think so probably <laughs> yeah yeah or there's some real science behind like the yeah aromatics. so you were you were joking about how i must have worked really hard to get this clear i did use some sparkaloid i think in this but the time is really what helped yeah. this clear because it sat in a carboy just in the corner for it's eight, great. Eight I months. really like this. And I think that, um, of course, you've seen some video, as we've talked about this, but there's a big video of his dandelion mm -hmm. meat in the process. It's one that you do once a year, but it is very good, and it is well worth the time. So, yeah, no, I, I, I brought you a tiny bottle tonight mm. because I, it's also one of those ones that I don't think you just sit and kill a 750 of. No. Like, you really want to open one of these and share it with friends. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. <laughs> but but um, it, it is, I, th I think it's worth the time to at least do once. Yes. I was lurking Reddit the other day, and somebody was asking about making a dandelion uh -huh. meat, And they were working off of my recipe. Mm -hmm. And it was fun to read the comments, as a lurker, not participating in the conversation, <laughs> of people picking apart the recipe and saying, mm -hmm. well, this isn't going to work, and that's not going to work. And I'm like, here we are. I think it worked. To that point, <laughs> if you you have to recipe um, test things. Now, if you are a beginner beginner mead maker, my suggestion is to follow a recipe. Mm -hmm. Don't don't get too crazy um, unless you have somebody right over your shoulder who knows what they're doing because you won't 
learn the good and the bad. There's good and bad in every recipe. And the truth mm-hmm. is every recipe is unique to the person in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. There are standards in our world. Um, the Joe's Ancient Orange Mead. Mm-hmm. Um, bomb. One, yeah, bomb. Mm-hmm. Uh, Viking blood that are standards. That doesn't mean that that recipe can only be made that way. <laughs> right. That's just not how it works. And so, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to like it made that way. <laughs> right. Either. Right. So they, we keep them standard as people who created them, but mm-hmm. we alter them to fit our wants and needs. And that's that's the thing that I'll, I'll like wrap that up with with this is, yes, this is my recipe that I developed. But if you watch that video, I was working off of probably a dozen mm-hmm. depression era recipes to try and figure out what the average thing people were doing mm-hmm. was and go that route because I've never made it. Right. So I can't just be like, oh, I'm an expert at making this, but yeah. I can work from the knowledge of our ancestors mm-hmm. who made this because this is what was available right? And, uh, and come up with something drinkable on the first shot because I'm using that institutional knowledge. I can say it's very good. I, I will <laughs> cheers to that. So this has been... Another one, episode six. Another one. <laughs> oh, I mean, we're gonna we this. The fun thing about this series is that it can never end until we run out of meats. But theoretically, um, we got a lot of meats. Yeah, we I do. Get that. Could you try again? <laughs> series third <thirsty>. series. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you for having me. This was a, yeah. this was an interesting. I'm glad I got to try one of the Star Wars. Yeah, I'll have to pull out um, the the colors and show you at some point because they're. They are very interesting, and I have this. I have three total Star Wars meads. Um, this is Darth Vader's. And there's Yoda and Mace Windu. So that was a cool project. It is very fun. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you, BC, for coming on again. And this is uh, one of my favorite shows to do. Our other combined show that we like to do is called Mead Swap. You mm-hmm. can find that on BC's channel, which is at Doing the Most, of course. That one and just takes a little bit longer to produce. <laughs> yeah, the, the, it's a little tougher. This one we just drink mead. We make yeah. mead on the other one. So, yeah, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Go check that out and go check out BC's channel, of course. And we'll catch you next time. So, cheers. cheers.